Hi, hello, welcome to Wiser Pinoy TV. This is James Imbilon, and we will be having our part two lecture series for the Criminal Law Book One. So, in our part one, we ended up with a discussion pertaining to impassable crime. So, for this video, we will be starting in Article 6 and we will try to relate this particular article to the following articles of the Revised Penal Code, such as Articles 248 and 249, which discusses about murder and homicide respectively, including Articles 298, 308, 210, and 212 of the Revised Penal Code pertaining to the execution of deeds by means of violence of, um, or intimidation and who are liable for theft, direct bribery, and qualified bribery. So, let's try to discuss Article 6 that pertains to the consummated, frustrated, and attempted felonies. So, we have to take note that consummated felonies as well as those which are frustrated and attempted are punishable under our Revised Penal Code. So, a felony is consummated when all of the elements necessary for the execution and accomplishment of a particular crime are present and it is frustrated when the offender performs all the acts of execution which would produce the felony as a consequence but which nevertheless do not produce it by reason of causes independent of the will or of the perpetrator there is attempt when the offender commences the commission of a felony directly by overt acts and does not perform all the acts of execution which should produce the felony by reason of same cause or accident other than his own spontaneous desistance. Now we will be trying to explain each stage in our discussion. So what are the stages of execution? So let us start with um, let us start with the first one which is the consummated. In Article 6, the question normally asked in the board exam here is, is the charge correct? Yan yung isa sa question na tinatanong dyan, is the charge correct? Second thing that you need to remember in answering the stages of execution, normally the, ex the board examiner would tell you, is the charge for straighted homicide correct? Meaning to say, the examiner will supply the wrong answer. So, I hope you follow. The examiner will give you, will suggest to you rather, the wrong answer. So technically, you really need to be familiar with the different stages of the, of the felony. Okay. Now, let's proceed to the preparatory. In criminal law, this preparatory act, ilagay nyo sa notes nyo dyan, uh, you do not defeat the purpose of this notes uh, or of this lecture series. So you have to really um, put there. Uh, preparatory should be related to conspiracy. So let's talk about conspiracy here. So um, in criminal law, there is such a thing as preparatory act, meaning to say even if there is a preparatory act, this does not mean an automatic liability already. So halimbawa niyan is si Maria, plan niya na lasunin si Ana. Okay. Plano pa lang. Can Maria be charged? Of course, no. Kasi under sa criminal law natin, there must be an overt or direct act to commit the crime. So, dapat nilaso na niya. Pero, if preparatory part pa lang, hindi. Pero, meron din mga cases na preparatory pa lang ay liable ka na. Uh, yun yung tinatawag natin conspiracy under rebellion, treason, so on and so forth. But we will be discussing them later part. Okay. So, when you talk about the attempted stage, let's first uh, discuss attempted stage of execution. These are the factors that you need to remember. Ito yung preparatory, indeterminate offense rule, and spontaneous desistance ang iisipin ninyo muna. So, ano bang tatlong ito? Halimbawa, itong group na ito, nagplano ta, na, let's say, grupo tayo, we plan na hold upin natin yung isang banko um, doon sa Makati City. So, um... Kailangan natin, uh, kailangan din natin na isipin here na yung pagpaplano natin, na stage na pagpaplano, ay eh hindi pa ito um, punishable under the law. So, we cannot be held liable for attempted robbery because there is no overt act yet. And mere conspiracy to commit robbery is not penalized by the revised penal code. Mere. But alam nyo na pwedeng anong pwede i-charge sa atin for having a meeting for purpose of committing a crime under the revised penal code. 
So, ito yung tinatawag nating illegal assembly for purpose of committing a crime penalized under the revised penal code. You thought na wala talagang criminal liability, but under the revised penal code, for the purpose of um, discussing it, meron, meron crime dyan, yung tinatawag nating illegal assembly for committing a crime. Okay. Preparatory Act is favorite na part ito ng exam. No? Um, kailangan yung malaman yan. So, let's proceed to indeterminate offense rule. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng indeterminate offense rule? Um, in a criminal law, kaya mahirap ito dahil palagi tayo binibitin when it comes to discussion. Uh, lagi, uh, you do not assume facts. No, that's the general rule. Di natin i-assume yung facts. Okay? So, in criminal law, you are not allowed to speculate. So, you are not allowed, uh, you are only, you are only allowed to analyze the set of facts. You, you're not even allowed to imagine it. So, example, no? One night, the accused secretly entered the house of the victim. So, once inside the house, he opened the refrigerator. So, some items, pero nagising yung owner. So, the accused here hide behind the refrigerator. Nakatago siya. He was discovered by the owner. Okay, nakita siya. So, the question here is, is he liable for attempted robbery? Pag may question na ganyan, try niyong sagutin o sabi ng Supreme Court under the concept of indeterminate offense rule, you cannot speculate whether or not he is committing a robbery inside the house. The intention of the accused is not clear whether to commit robbery, to commit rape, or to commit another crime. Another crime. So, under the indeterminate offense rule, the intention of the accused is not yet clear. So, you cannot speculate. So, yun yung tinatry kong i-explain kanina. Normally, para maklear siya, when you encounter things like this, and the examiner will ask you, is he liable for the felony of attempted robbery? Pag nakita niyo yung question na ito, answer niyo dito is no. Why? There is no overt act yet leading towards his intended crime. So, dapat ganun yung principle na ma-remember ninyo under indeterminate offense rule. So, is there an overt act leading towards his intended crime? If none, there is no attempted felony. So, is there a possible, possible crime committed by the accused having been found inside the house? The answer, of course, is yes. There is. Um, para may kasunod na question na is he liable for another crime, huwag niyong sabing impossible crime yan because again, that is not impossible crime. Kasi nasa loob siya. He is liable for trespass to dwelling. Yan yung nangyari. Any person who shall enter the house of another against the will of the owner, the phrase there against the will of the owner is very clear from the fact that sarado siya. So, against the protest of the owner. If the question is, is he liable for attempted robbery? The answer again is no. Okay. So, ano yung tinatawag natin? Spontaneous desistance. Spontaneous desistance, this is true only in the attempted stage. Take note of that. It is an absolutory cause, meaning to say the accused changed his mind. He backed out before he committed the crime. Okay, Before he reached the stages of execution, but remember, this is true only in the attempted stage. When the felony reaches the frustrated stage, do not talk about spontaneous desistance anymore. Wala na yan. So, ano ibig sabihin ng at, um, spontaneous desistance? Let's say, for example, papatayin ni Pedro si Jose. Babarilin na sana niya, pero naawa siya kay Pedro kasi best friend pala sila ni Pedro. Naalala niya yung mga sweet, memory, sweet memories nila, yung mga lambingan nila. So, hindi na niya tinuloy. So, mayroon bang attempted um, homicide na nangyari or attempted na pagpatay? The answer is no. Why? Because hindi tinuloy. No? Based sa kanyang uh, own will. Kasi nagka-decide siya, hindi na ituloy. But, what if, ibahin natin yung story. Babarilin na sana ni Mario si Jose, pero pagbarilin niya, nagulat siya kasi mayroong pusang dumaan, so hindi na niya natuloy. Was there an attempted um, homicide? Yes, there is. Because yung pag niya, ay hindi yun cause ng own will niya, or yung tinatawag natin spontaneous, spontaneous desistance niya, kundi liit Kung hindi, um, cause ito ng other factor. So, ito yung tinatawag natin spontaneous desistance. Yung decision mo na hindi na ituloy yung pag-commit ng crime. Okay? So, let's try to proceed to... 
Okay, theft. Crimes without frustrated stages. So, ano yung mga crimes na walang frustrated stages or stage? So, itong mga crimes na ito, paborito itanong ito usually ng mga board examiners. So, in the board exam, tatanungin dyan, is the accused liable for frustrated corruption of public official? Um, let's say, for example, in theft, corruption of public officials, direct bribery, and kailangan natin malaman kung itong mga stages ba na, itong mga felonies ba na ito ay merong frustrated stage, but under the rule, wala silang frustrated, meron lang silang attempted act consummated. Okay. So, however, um, before ko i-discuss ito, I will also discuss to you, ano ba yung frustrated? So, yung frustrated is, ginawa mo na lahat-lahat ng mga acts, pero hindi siya namatay due to, um, let's say, medical intervention. Let's say, gusto mo siya pati, binaril mo siya, sa sampung baril ang ginawa, tama ang ginawa mo sa katawan niya, but he's still able to survive due to inter- external intervention, like medical, or ano ba, maswerte pa siya. So, frustrated siya na stage. Okay? Kasi buhay pa siya. Pero nagawa mo yung mga acts. Pero pag sinabi natin, napatay mo talaga siya, you perfectly committed all the elements of a felony or a crime, then that is the the what we call consummated. Okay. Now, in so far as the stages of execution is concerned, theft, ang number one question ng, ng mga examiner, tandaan ninyo, no? there is no stages of execution sa special laws. Example, yung tindahan ninyo, meron kayong sales lady, nagnakaw siya ng shampoo, tapos inilagay niya yun sa bulsa niya, nakita sa CCTV camera, and then you confronted her. Ano yung nasa, ano mo, ano, anong na nasa bulsa mo? Then, sinagot niya, ay sorry po, ibabalik ko na and all. So, binalik niya. So, what crime did she commit? And in what stage? Mm-hmm. So this is very controversial. So it is already consummated theft in so far as stages of execution are concerned. The rule is this, once the accused gained possession of the item, there is already taking and it's legal in its legal sense even if the accused failed to bring out the item because he has already the free disposal of the item. So that's the rule. So the rule is the moment the accused gained possession of the item, no matter temporary or momentarily, there is already taking no, in the legal sense because he has already free disposal of it. Thus, he is liable for consummated theft. So, corruption of public official and direct bribery tayo. Okay. So, um, here, yung tinatawag natin, ano ba kaibahan ng corruption of public official and direct bribery. So, sino ba yung nagpukumit niyan? Halimbawa, meron akong gustong favor na gagawin ni mayor. So, nilag, binigyan ko si mayor na nilag, binigyan ko siya ng 100,000 pesos. Ako, na nagbigay ng 100,000 pesos kay mayor, I am guilty of corruption of public official. Si mayor na tumanggap ng 100,000 in exchange of my favor is guilty of direct bribery. So, only attempted and consummated stage lang ang available ng uh, felonies na ito. Walang frustrated. So, when can you say it is attempted? So, attempted corruption of public official, it is committed if the giver's offer is rejected. Halimbawa, pinanggihan ako ni mayor. Okay. So, ang kaso sa akin is attempted public, uh, corruption of public official. Okay. Consummated corruption of public official if the offer or the gift is accepted. So, there are two crimes committed here. Laging magkasama yan sila. Corruption of public officer at direct bribery. Once there is consummated corruption of public official, it follows also that there is consummated direct bribery. So, corruption of public official is committed by the giver, while direct bribery is committed by the official. Okay. So, crimes without stages of execution. Okay. So, these are crimes that are considered consummated at the onset of the overt act, also known as formal crime. So, these are act of lasciviousness, slander, perjury, physical injuries, at rape. So, these are the so-called formal crimes which are considered 
as already in the consummated stage. Tandaan nyo palagi yan and um, dapat yung i-memorize yan. After the seriousness, paano ba ito nakukumit? Okay. Uh, ang act ng lasciviousness is yung itatouch yung mga masiselan mong katawan. Let's say, nag, nasa bar kayo at tapos yung isang lalaki, hinawakan niya yung dede ng babae or yung um, ari ng babae o yung puwet. So, the crime committed there is act of lasciviousness. Okay. Rape by, attempted rape ba yun? No, because attempted rape, wala yan. By rule is, walang attempted rape. No, automatic consummated yung rape. So, by mere uh, by mere touching of the organs the penis and the vagina constituted rape already under the recent and prevailing jurisprudence of the Supreme Court so hindi kailangan yung napasok talaga or may penetration mere touching of the organs constituted already rape no okay so that's very basic so slander the moment you slander someone hindi mo pwedeng sabihin that when you utter slanderous words i sorry wala hindi ko sinadya no you are already con- consummated or you are already committed the consummated stage of slander. Ano ba yung slander? Yung ipapahiya mo yung tao with the intention, magsasalita ka ng negative sa isang tao with the intention na ipahiya siya. That's what we call slander, pag sinabi mo. But if the form of that is through writing, yun yung tinatawag natin na libel. Okay? Perjury naman, yung moment na nagsinungaling ka sa korte, you already committed the crime. Okay? So, yun yun. So, physical injury, on the other hand, the moment you punch someone, di mo pwedeng sabihin, wala, wala mo, hindi mo sinadya. So, automatically, it's a consummated uh, physical injury, whether less physical, less serious physical injury or serious physical injury, as the case may be. Uh, tsaka yung rape, no? there is no frustrated stage of rape. That is, uh, kasi the moment you consummate your carnal knowledge, even if there is mere slight penetration, you're already liable of consummated rape. Okay? Tinanggal na ng Supreme Court yung frustrated na um, stage ng rape. Okay. So, now, let's discuss about consummated arson versus frustrated arson. So, dito tayo sa arson, some of your books, it would appear to be confusing. Let us clear this out. No? Um, in one case, ganito yung nangyari. The accused ra- placed rags and used socks. Binusan niya ng kerosene. So, after it was soaked, he set them on fire. No part of the house was burnt because the neighbors were able to stop the fire. Question, what should be the charge against accused? Should it be frustrated or consummated? In so far as arson is concerned, no portion of the house is burned, that is only frustrated arson. However, if a mere or even small portion of the house is burned, that is already consummated arson. Arson is a very special, um, very special siya na, na topic because maraming mga events na nangyayari niya. So, you have to be very familiar of that. Okay? So, take note, kahit na umitim lang yung ano, mere, nagkaitim lang yung bubong or portion ng bahay, consummated na yan. Okay? Article 8 of the Revised Penal Code, let's try to relate it with Article 17, 18, 19, and 20 of the Revised Penal Code. So, Conspiracy proposal to commit felony. So, conspiracy and proposal to commit felony are punishable only in cases which the law specially, specifically or especially provides a penalty. Therefore, a conspiracy exists when two or more persons come to an agreement concerning the commission of a felony and decide to commit it. There is proposal when the person who has decided to commit a felony proposes its execution to some other person or persons. So, under Article 8, Conspiracy, we have forms of conspiracy, effect in criminal liability, the implied conspiracy, and the rule in determining the existence of conspiracy. So, there are several questions under this topic that we have to really take note. Is mere presence considered as an act of conspiracy? When do you say that collective act constitutes conspiracy? And in this case where there, where there is several accused, what is the respective criminal liability on the participants? This is a very exciting topic and once you already grasp the concept, you will really appreciate this. Okay? So the question asked here is what is the criminal responsibility of the accused? Why? In relation to Article 17, 18, 19, and 20. So, these provisions are very interrelated. So, kaya sinama natin yan under this provision also. So, 
um, by principle, these are the principles that you need to remember. In relation to Article 4, the accused had the malicious intent to commit a crime. Meron na silang mens rea or guilty mind. That is why if you are asked, can conspiracy be committed through culpa? The answer is no, kasi nga lahat ng conspirators, they have this malicious intent to commit a crime. So the conspirators have the common objective to commit an act punishable by law. Common, uh, take note then Hana, common objective, if the objective is not common, then there is no conspiracy. So it's very important that there must be a common objective. Kasi kung walang common objective, then conspiracy ceases to exist. So what are the forms of conspiracy? So there are two forms of conspiracy. Conspiracy as a means of incurring criminal liability. Um, you have to remember, yung sa, uh, sabi ko kanina sa Article 6 that mere preparatory acts are punishable by law. You plan to kill the victim, you conspire to kill a victim on a particular day. Is that conspiracy, punish, uh, is that conspiracy punishable? The answer is no. That falls under the first kind of conspiracy. As long as there is no overt act, conspiracy is not yet punishable. In conspiracy, as a means of incurring liability, there must be an overt act and the accused in this case or in this kind of conspiracy are conspired principles by direct participation. So, tingnan niyo yung relation niya sa Article 17, Paragraph 1. All of them are considered principle by direct uh, participation. Okay? One, those who take direct part in execution of the act. So, let's proceed to the second form of conspiracy. Conspiracy is itself an act punishable as felony. This mere conspiracy in itself is a crime. It is conspiracy to commit treason, conspiracy to commit codita, conspiracy to commit rebellion or insurrection are already punishable by mere fact that you agree to commit them. Conspiracy, which is a crime in itself, it is punishable by mere fact that the conspirators agree to commit such crime. Again, we are talking about question on discuss the criminal responsibility of the accused kasi nga, collective yung liability nila. Ayon, ayon nga yung example natin, no? the preparatory act, nagplano kayong pumatay ng tao, nahuli kayo, pero hindi kayo liable for the absence of an overt act. Okay, except yung mga na-mention natin na mga felonies like treason, codita, insurrection, and, and so on and so forth. So what is the effect? of this in the criminal liability. Yung effects niya depende. If there is conspiracy, all criminal, uh, all are criminally liable. The liability is one, the liability of one is the liability of all. So, collective responsibility. Bakit ito very significant? Kasi when you answer a question that involves conspiracy, you always put emphasis on the collective responsibility of the accused. All of the accused shall be criminally responsible for the resulting crime. That's the essence of conspiracy. If there is no conspiracy, the liability of the accused is dependent on the extent of the participation of the accused. Depende how extensive yung participation niya. So again, we have to emphasize the common objective rule. So the following questions, we have to consider them. One, how to determine whether there is conspiracy. Two, is mere presence considered an act of conspiracy? Three, when do you say that collective acts constitute conspiracy? And last one, in the case of where there are several accused, what is the respective criminal liability of the participants? Lahat ito merong conspiracy. The only basic answer that to that is there we have to determine whether or not in a particular group or in a particular scenario or in a particular situation, there is conspiracy that must be established or which establishes a common objective of the participants. If the objective is common, that is very clear. No? Mere presence will make a participant liable as a conspirator because of the common objective. As a result, your acts will be collective. You don't need to perform a particular act kasi lahat kayo whether nag-participate ka ng malaki or hindi kasi meron kayong common objective, you are all conspirators and you are all principal of the crime to be committed. Okay? So, 
The prosecution must establish a common objective if they will accuse conspiracy as a factor in committing the crime. So mere presence of participant will make him liable as a conspirator because of the common objective. As a result, the act of one is the act of all. It is not necessary that each and everyone should perform uniform acts. Okay. What is the criminal liability of the accused? No, in application of the provisions under Article 8, 17, 19, 18, 19, and 20 of the Revised Penal Code. Take note that this deals whether there is collective responsibility or individual responsibility. Affects also This also affects the penalty to be imposed to each, whether as a group or separate, differentiating the degree of participation, like principal, accomplice, or accessory. So as long as there is common objective, one doesn't need to perform the same act with that of the other conspirators. Common objective rule lang ha. So wag niyong kalimutan kasi in conspiracy, the normal issue asked here is the degree of participation of each person. So ano ba ito? Accomplice lang siya or principal by direct participation ba siya? Yan yung questions that dealing with conspiracy. Things to remember in conspiracy so that you will not be able to forget the principles of two forms of conspiracy. When there is no conspiracy proven, the responsibility of each participant is individual and they must be charged individually. Hiwa-hiwalay sila, hindi sila pwedeng yung sa under civil, uh, civil procedure na may joinder. So wala yan. They must be dealt with separately. If there is no common objective, treat the accused individually and separate the penalties to be imposed. So in case of doubt of whether there is conspiracy, doubt shall be resolved in favor of the non-existence of conspiracy. That's very basic in the doctrine of pro reo. So rules that we need to remember when there is no conspiracy proven, the responsibility of each participant individu is individual and they must be charged separately since there is no joinder of causes of action just like in civil procedure. Consequently, the penalties imposed must be applied and dealt with separately. So, in case of doubt as to whether there is conspiracy, doubt shall be resolved in favor of the non-existence of the conspiracy. So, the acts to be considered are acts done before, during, and after the consummation of the crime and must describe concerted action and common objective rule or the community of purpose or joint criminal objective. All must be geared towards the attainment of a felony or a crime. Once it is established, accused need not perform the same or uniform acts. Pwede yung isa, minor lang ang ginawa niyang acts but still considered as principal. The same punishment, the same degree of um, gravity na gagamitin niyan sa pagpapanish. When a conspir uh, conspirator deceased from the conspiracy, what if, you know, during the actual, hindi na niya tinuloy? In the exam, once you establish conspiracy, the next question here is, what is the effect if one of the conspirators performs an act of desistance to disassociate himself from the conspiracy? There is a rule for the accused to be considered to have validly desisted from the conspiracy. The Supreme Court said, for you to be validly excused from the conspiracy, the conspirator must perform an overt act to disassociate himself from the conspiracy. Mere plan would not suffice. Take note, mere plan does not suffice. For the conspirator to, to be validly excused from conspiracy, he must perform an overt act to disassociate himself from conspiracy. Okay. Are all crimes susceptible to conspiracy? The answer is no. There are crimes that no conspiracy can be appreciated. What are these crimes? What makes them unique? So example, parricide and death under exceptional circumstance. Why is conspiracy not appreciated despite conspiracy? Because the personal or blood relation of the accused of the victim is one of the main factor. Qualified theft. The personal trust and confidence is reposed only between the employer and the employee. So remember, when you are confronted with conspiracy, which appears to involve personal relationship um, between the accused and the victim, because normally dalawa lang yan, um, parricide and qualified theft. 
when a crime involves personal relationship between the accused and the victim, conspiracy cannot be appreciated. Kung walang conspiracy sa parricide, for example, ano yung rule natin? The offender's degree of participation shall be considered. So the participation of the offender must be as that of an accomplice. We need to treat the accused individually according to the doctrine of pro reo. And when there is no conspiracy, the degree of the participation of the offender shall be considered. Now, conspiracy in relation to Article 17 of the Revised Penal Code. How to determine if principal, if by direct participation, absence of conspiracy and individual responsibility, and detaching from conspiracy, and of course, the commission of a crime not agreed upon, applying the doctrine of pro reo. Okay. Isama na natin dito yung Article 18, 19, 20 kasi they are all interrelated at magkakasama din din naman yan sila. So what if ang agreement natin is to rob only? That's, a, that's an example. Mahu-hold up lang tayo, nung pasukin natin yung bahay, ay may nang rape. No? Yung lima sa atin ng rape. Can all of us be charged of robbery and rape at the same time? Sa Doctrine of Proreo, sabi ng Supreme Court, acts done outside the contemplation of conspiracy is not covered by conspiracy. The conspirator shall be held liable only for the acts done in conspiracy. Okay? And the acts done outside the contemplation of conspiracy, only the actual perpetrators are liable thereof. So, ang plan natin, the conspiracy natin is to rob a bank or rob a house, but pagdating doon, ay manang rape. So, yung rape na case nyon, sino yung involved sa rape? Sila lang yung liable. Yung mga hindi. hindi. But, as to um, robbery, everybody will be held liable. Ganun yun. Okay. So, let's proceed to how to determine the principal by direct participation, the unity of acts, and same criminal objective. So, question, how do you determine unity of acts? So, makikita nyo yan from the facts of the case. Example, five accused, the three inflicted mortal wounds, the two merely kicked the victim. Based on the facts of the case, they want the victim to die, discuss the individual responsibility of the accused. The answer, all of them are liable principal by direct participation. The keyword there is the unity of the acts towards the same criminal objective. So, if you want to hold them all liable as principals by direct participation. Another factor to consider in the act of conspiracy by direct participation is the simultaneous act. How do you determine simultaneous act? Based on the facts of the case, makikita niyo din dyan that there is simultaneous act in pursuance of same criminal objectives. Always go back to the same criminal objective. Rule kasi in case of doubt, always resolve against conspiracy. Now, that's the doctrine of pro reo. Why? What if yung, isa, what if yung isang participant or yung participation lang niya is sinipa lang niya, sinipa lang niya but there is no conspiracy? No? What if ang participation ng isa is hinawakan lang niya sa kamay. So, they shall be treated individually as accomplices, minor, yung participation niya. Minor lang yung participation niya. So, accomplice lang yung role niya. So, in determining, there must be a unity of acts and simultaneous acts based on the facts of the case with the common objective rule. In the absence of the common objective, treat the accused individually according to the degree of the extent of their participation. No? So, principal, accomplices, and accessories. So, the rule here is when you are a conspirator, you already considered as a principal by direct participation. That is the presumption to that. If there is no conspiracy, those who inflicted mortal wounds will be solely responsible for the inflicted mortal wounds. Those who did not inflict mortal wounds are liable only for physical injuries, as the case may be. So, what is the effect of detaching from conspiracy? How do you detach from conspiracy? and can overt acts before and after conspiracy. And when one has detached himself from conspiracy, he may be exonerated. So, balik tayo sa portion na sinasabi ko sa inyo na how to detach from the conspiracy from the accused um, to validly disassociate himself and for him to be excused from the conspiracy. Balikan natin yun. In order to detach oneself from the conspiracy, he must perform an overt act. You know? If the accused detach himself, before the commission of the agreed crime, he cannot be charged. He is exempted from the criminal liability. Take note of that. Before the commission of the agreed crime, he withdrawn. Okay. 
If the crime is ongoing, he must leave the crime scene and report the ongoing conspiracy to the police. Otherwise, reports made after the commission of the crime, he shall not be exempted from the criminal responsibility as conspirator. So, the rationale for the second rule, because the overt acts of the agreed crime are already taking place, this is for valid detachment. Failure to report and merely leave the place, the accused is still liable because the overt acts are taking place. So let's proceed to the principal by inducement. We're done with the principal by direct participation. Let's proceed to principal by inducement. So when can we say that he is a principal by inducement? So those who are directly forced to induce others to commit him. Okay. Dito sa principal by inducement, magkakasama kasi yan sila sa principal by direct participation. Very important itong paragraph 2 of Article 7 of the Revised Penal Code. There are two ways of principal by inducement. There are two ways of doing it. One is directly forcing another to commit a crime. Yung pinilit ka to commit the crime. And second one is directly inducing another to commit a crime. So yung influence mo, nag, um, talagang inutusan mo. So that's yun. That, that, that's the principal by inducement. Now, the first one, why it is important it is very important because the first way of principle by inducement, which is to force another to commit a crime, there is no conspiracy here. Take note of that. The word force is the key word here. The accused must not be forced to commit a crime because in conspiracy, there is what we call common objective rule. Diba, pinilit mo lang siya. Eh, parang pag-ibig yan. No? Kasi pag da wag dapat ipilit, kakasuhan ka niya ng rape. Sorry, agree. So the person forcibly induced is exempted from criminal liability due to irresistible force and uncontrollable fear caused by the inducer. That's under Article 12 of the Revised Penal Code. Here, in this particular action, there is no criminal liability here. So, in the second one, directly inducing another by means of giving a prize, reward, or promise. So, sinabi ko na patayin mo siya, babayaran kita ng 500,000 pesos. So, this is also another um, scenario ng um, principal by direct inducement. In this kind of inducement, there is conspiracy. In fact, this is an aggravating circumstance. When you induce someone by means of price or reward to commit a crime, kinausap mo siya at sabi mo, um, friend, patayin mo si A at bigyan kita ng one hectareang lupa. That is an aggravating circumstance qualifying the crime of homicide to murder. In this type of inducement, there is conspiracy. So, in principle, by inducement, by means of giving price, reward, or promise, there is conspiracy of such inducement and that can be appreciated as an aggravating circumstance. So, rules to determine whether there is principle by inducement or principle by direct participation. This is the golden rule in determining the principle by inducement. The inducement must be the sole determining cause in the commission of the crime. That's very important. In the board exam, the person induced must not have a personal reason to commit a crime. Otherwise, there is no principal by inducement. Eh, what if pala the person induced has a personal reason to kill the victim? Tapos pagkata nagkataon lang na sinabihan siya na bibigyan ng 500,000, yun pala he has his own personal agenda na to kill the victim. So, go back to the rule. If the person induced has his own personal reason to commit the crime, there is no principal by direct inducement. So, the person induced must not have his own personal reason to commit. We have to take note of that. Okay? Now, the last one is principal by indispensable cooperation. So, under Article 17 also, principles by, um, by indispensable cooperation, it can be committed for those who cooperate in the commission of the offense by another act without which it would not have been accomplished. Kung wala yung tulong niya or yung ginawa niya, hindi mako-accomplish or makukumit ng crime. So, how to determine if one is principal by indispensable cooperation as distinguished from accomplices? Kasi parang pareho sila eh. If you try to look at it, they have participation, they have cooperated in the commission of the crime. So, the answer is here. You have to listen in this explanation kasi dito nyo madi-differentiate yung um, accomplice against Sa principal by indispensable cooperation. So, in principal by indispensable cooperation, he cooperated in the crime without which the crime would not have been accomplished. Kaya siya indispensable cooperation. 
So the rules to distinguish between the two is, among the three is in accomplices, one is not part of the conspiracy where the conspirators joined and participated in the decision making of the conspiracy. Di siya kasali doon, kaya accomplice lang siya. If the actor's participation is the only means to accomplish a crime, he is principled by indispensable cooperation. If his participation is not the only means. Okay, nakita ninyo? So, if principled by inducement cooperation ka, kung wala nang ibang means to commit the crime except yung ginawa at tulong mo. Pero if may other means pa, okay, meron pang ibang paraan to commit the crime aside sa ginawa mo, you're only um, considered under the law as accomplice to the crime. So, determination of one's participation or cooperation is not indispensable. Example, A, B, C, and D are conspirators. Tapos si E, hindi niya alam ang conspiracy. Normally kasi the question involved is that there is a conspiracy pero may hindi kasali sa conspiracy. So, how do we determine if this cooperation is not indispensable? The answer is checked from the facts. If there are other accused who can execute the acts without the the acts of the accomplice or if the principal can do acts alone without the accomplice then he is merely accomplice of the crime and not principal by indispensable cooperation what if there is no conspiracy di naman sasabihin sa facts na there is no conspiracy what if simultaneous acts geared towards the killing of the victim si a b c d and e tapos here comes f no conspiracy shown here but there is a common objective among the five. Tumulong itong si F by merely holding the arms of victim. Discuss the responsibility or determine the responsibility of A, B, C, D, E, and F. So, balik tayo sa facts of his participation is indispensable for the commission of the crime. If, if F's participation is indispensable in the commission of the crime, he is principal by, principal by indispensable cooperation. If not, the crime can be accom accomplished without, or the crime can be accomplished without F then he is considered merely as the accomplice of the crime. Okay, rules to remember here, accomplices cannot exist without principal by direct participation. Accomplices join the act only after knowing the conspiracy. You have to take note of that. Okay. So, let's proceed to Article 19, the accessories. So, ano ba yung mga accessories of the crime? The accessories are those who having knowledge of the commission of the crime and without having participated therein, either as principals or accomplices. Take part subsequent to its commission in any of the following manner. So, magiging accessory ka in the following scenario. One, by profiting themselves or assisting the offender to profit by the effects of the crime. So, now let's say for example, um, ninakaw, ninakaw nila, tapos yung ninakaw nila, ibinenta mo or binili mo, you become an accessory to that. So, un under anti-fencing law, so yung bumili ng ninakaw, you will become an accessory of the crime. By concealing or destroying the body of the crime or corpus delecti or the effects of the instrument thereof in order to prevent its discovery. Let's say, for example, umi umuwi yung amo mo, pagbukas mo ng sasakyan, may dugo pa na damit doon. So, ang ginawa mo, alam mo naman na so, nagka-idea ka na na pinatay ng amo mo yung biktima, so sinunog mo para isave mo yung amo mo. So, by mere, um, by mere burning the corpus delecti or the body of the crime, that, that evidence, you already become an accessory of the crime. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I think let's stop there for the part 2. So, we will be continuing the part 3 and we will be discussing the GMA, uh, the justifying exempting the mitigating the aggravating and the alternative circumstances on our next video thank you very much for watching and of course i hope you have learned something about this video and you do not please do not forget to like share and then subscribe and click the bell button on the below so that you will become updated notify kayo whenever we have the part three or part four of this lecture series thank you very much and god bless you all